At the moment, I have no clue what I'm going to do with this. This may be best actually taken off here, but this long straight bit is a no-no. If this is all gone, the tree will have to work on what's left. I suspect there's a fair bit of this trunk. So yeah, this is a difficult one. Why the hell did I get that? This is another tree. I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do with this. I can't see what to do with that. It's just one of those, again, I, I look back on it now and think, why the hell did I buy that? Oh, hi everybody, and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. So, uh, yeah, Roger, what did you do with those two black pine trees? If you can't decide what to do with the tree, get rid of it. And they are going to Gavin at Not Another Bonsai channel. So that's right, he didn't know what to do with them himself, so he sent them over to me. And uh, yeah, they arrived the other day, and don't they look great? So let somebody else have a go, and I hope you enjoy them, Gavin. So yeah, Roger, you did a, a bang up job packing these trees up. They arrived in fantastic condition. We can see this here is one of the trees. This is the one with the branch growing from the inside of a bend. Kind of an interesting looking one, that one. Just put that just behind the box here. And then this one, this the other one, in that curly design that I think a few months back you took the wire off. So yeah, really nice looking tree. But I had a look at what I had to pay for these two, and Gavin is getting them incredibly cheap. <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much for these, Roger. Uh, as he said in his video, he, uh, well, we did agree on a price. He agreed a price with me, and uh, it was a little bit less than what he paid, but uh, he still let me have them. And uh, yeah, we have some, well, two fantastic looking black pine trees. Now, one of these is a Austrian black pine, and the other one is a a Japanese black pine. I don't think Roger knew the difference, and uh, to be honest, neither do I, but I do suspect that this one, the one with the straight trunk near the top, uh, this is the Japanese. The only reason why I say that is because this has slightly longer needles than the other one, and for my research, Japanese black pines have longer needles, the Austrian black pine have slightly shorter. I might be wrong. If I am, please do let me know. Put a comment in the comment section and correct me on that, but from what I'm guessing, this one, I think, is the Japanese black pine, and this one is the Austrian. So yeah, let's take a, a better look at these trees. Uh, I know uh, Roger said in this video, why the hell did I buy that? <laughs> now, uh, I'm looking at these trees thinking that there are possibilities. You know, I bought them because I do have ideas. Let's just take a little look at the root ball on this. I have let the soil dry out just a little bit because I knew I was going to do this, this potting on work. I'm not going to repot them as such, but I am going to start them in a slightly different way. There's a little bit of drainage screen just in the bottom of there. we we'll get rid of that. And yeah, they have a very nice root system. So what I'm thinking with this tree is at the minute it's, well, the way Roger had it at least, is growing in this way, in this very upright style, kind of with this uh, trunk going around. And to me that looked kind of ugly, very straight section here, curved around here, didn't really look that good. So what if, with this nice root here, what if you turned that that way and had this as a cascade. So yeah, this pot I picked up from a local potter. Uh, you've probably seen on my channel many times before that uh, I, I picked up a lot of pots from the local potter called Mo. He's a really good uh, pot maker. He, he turns them, he hand turns them on a, on a wheel and uh, he just makes some really good quality pots. Now, of course, they're always round because they're hand turned, uh, but the bonsai pots are a real bargain. This one cost me £10. So let's just uh, take a look. Oh, there's a drainage screen just in here. Uh, let's see if I can tease that out. I'm not sure if I can. There's actually a root growing right through that. So just reach down here for my pruners. What I have to do is just come in here, snip that away like so. And then hopefully that will just break away. And then that releases that root. There's another root. Will that thread through? Maybe not. It's uh, just cut that way too just to release those roots this is the problem with drainage screen you know sometimes your roots grow through that's not a bad bit of screen actually i think what we do we use that in the bottom of this pot so with the screen in the bottom of the pot we can just reach to, into our saw, uh, saw drum here just to put some saw in the bottom of the pot and what i'm going to do is bring this up to about here i think maybe about a third of the way up the pot uh, because you can imagine you know these roots they're not going to go that far down 
we can see some of these roots do go round. So what we might be able to do is actually most of these roots are going off to the one side, which is ideal really for what we need. Look at that, all of the roots are coming off from this one side, most of which are actually coming off from this anchor root, or that will be our main anchor root. Because this is the thing with a cascading tree. If the tree is going to lean, it's always going to have a root that is anchoring it into the ground. It's always something to bear in mind when you have a cascading tree. Uh, some people have cascading trees where they go up and then they go down. That just doesn't look very natural. You, just, you don't see trees going bing bong. You know, it just doesn't happen. The tree is going to cascade. It's going to go like that. And if it's going to go like that, you need an anchor root. So this tree is fantastic because all of the roots go off in that one direction. So what I'm hoping we might be able to do is take these roots, just like so, edge them around, put them into the pot just like so, hook them in, expose this anchor root because that looks really cool. I like that. And then have this growing something like that. So as we can see, the way that I've done this, I've left the fold point of the wire just up here. So I was thinking, well, what if I loop a piece of wire through that, have two zip ties that I put around just, well, not the base of the pot, but just above the base of the pot, and then have another piece of wire wrapped through that, up to the uh, up through this loop, and then we can tighten that and hopefully bend this down, giving us the bend in the trunk that we're looking for. All right, so let's see if this little plan works. So, of course, you know, one zip tie isn't going to go round. So all, I've, all I'm going to do is just join a few together. So let's put that in there. I think three should be fine. Yeah, three is going to be fine. So just wrap that around, make sure they're all roughly even. This, this is just a, a way of creating our clamp, our clamp point. Now this is certainly something that I guess I wouldn't teach you in bonsai school. And uh, it's one of those sort of budget ideas that, I don't know, if it works, it works. <laughs> but, but uh, it, you know, if you don't have the thickest wire, then having an anchor point is a, well, having something to anchor to is, is a good way to do it. So now that we have the zip ties on, it's now just a case of putting the wire through and wrapping it around our loop. Right, now what I need to do is just poke the wire through the gap in between the zip tie and the pot, and then take the other end and put it through the loop in my wire, just up here. And then the aim is to bring this side round, bring that round, meet the two points together, and twist, like so. What I'm going to do now is get a pair of pliers on this and just kind of pull down and twist. So pull the tree down to where you want it and twist. And bring these spy around a little bit, so that poking out just a bit. That's it. And all you're doing is just pulling and twisting. It's twisting until you take up the slack. Just pull and twist. So yeah, just pull and twist. And I think that has certainly added a lot more movement into this, this tree and given it more of a cascade look. Now, uh, I think what we do, just to make this look a little bit tidier, we'll cut off the excess of our zip ties. We don't need them on. And when they're like so, let's set, cut this one off at the back here and cut that one off just there. And then of course we have our excess wire just on here, we'll cut that back just like so. Now, I know this does look a little bit crude at the minute, but this is obviously just a temporary measure just to get that nice cascading bend into the tree. Now, of course, we do also have the the end of the tree, uh, the or the top of the tree, I guess. I guess it's still the top of the tree, it's going down, but it's still the top. So yeah, we wanna kind of swing this round. So for that, we're gonna need a little bit more wire. Right, so to do this, I'm just going to use some aluminium wire and I'm just going to put a hook just in the end, just like so, like that. And then we hook that over this branch to create an anchor point. And it's just simply a case of wrapping the wire around the trunk. So I've just wrapped this wire around this trunk here. And uh, the aim now is to try to bend this around to create a little bit more movement in the trunk. I think we can achieve. I think if we just do this and bend it round, 
that's not looking too bad. We do of course have this branch here that will need wiring back there, but yeah, that's giving it more of a snake like coming down, going around and then going around. It's a whole lot more interest. So I've just added a piece of wire just going between this branch here and this branch down here. So now that we have this movement in the trunk, maybe bring it down a little bit more. We want to create a pad just here. So I was thinking that with this branch, I might bend this back and then out like so. So you can imagine we can have a bit of a pad here. This branch is quite thin, so I'm going to leave that for the time being. But I did ideally want to bring this one up. So if we imagine this branch will go back, maybe we might lose this branch in the future because it is a bar branch with this one. So yeah, I think that's looking really good. I really do like the movement in this tree. And uh, it's kind of a funny thing because when I first saw this in Roger's video, I was thinking, yeah, that, that could probably be a literati. We'll cut back all of the lower branches, cut them off, and then just have a bit of foliage up on top. But then the idea of a cascade came into my mind and I thought, that is what I can do with that tree. So yeah, Roger, I bet you didn't think I was gonna go quite this extreme with your tree, but I do think over time, if we let this grow, let this set into this new position, kind of a radical position, but yeah, let this set, it is gonna become a fantastic tree in the future, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really, really great tree. But of course, there was the other one. You know, how are we gonna style that other black pine? All right, so let's take a look at the other black pine. Now, this is one that I thought was the Japanese black pine because the needles are slightly longer than the other one. But uh, this is the one that Roger had growing in just a basic plant pot. And that is the tree in all of its splendor. Now, the big question is, what can you do with this tree? So yeah, that is quite a tough question to answer. Uh, you can see there are some wire scars just in here, a bit of inverse taper where this, this branch comes out. Of course, this branch is coming out on the inside of a bend, which isn't ideal. Uh, we do have a few buds up here, and I think Roger's idea was to cut that, the, the, well, the trunk just here, with the aim of allowing these, these branches to develop and maybe form a bit of a, a canopy up here, maybe train this branch in such a way that it can, well, be some kind of a feature, but Obviously, being on the inside of a bend isn't the best place for it to be. Uh, so, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge. I mean, of course, you could cut back a lot of these branches, and what well, you could cut them all off, actually, and then just have it as a literati. So if you imagine all of this is gone, and you just have these branches up here, maybe allow some branches to grow up here. So, yeah, the possibilities for this tree are by the many. But I think the idea that I'm liking most is to get rid of all of this, and grow this as our new leader. Like so, big cut coming up. Bang. So wow, that was a big, a big chop, and that is a lot of the tree taken off. Now, you know, sometimes you do need to make these big decisions in bonsai. Uh, and you mustn't see this as wasted growth. This helped achieve this somewhat thick trunk. It's not the thickest trunk in the world, but you know, this growth helped achieve that. Now, if we kept that on. It's pretty much the same thickness going all the way up to the apex. And that isn't ideally what you want in a bonsai tree. You do want some degree of taper. So with this idea, we can add a little bit of wire to this, wire that upwards, and then that will help us achieve taper going up into the apex of the tree. So I've just added a little piece of wire just going from the base of the trunk all the way up to this branch up here. And all we're gonna do is just bend that round just to give that a little bit more movement and encourage it to go up, just like so. And we'll let that grow and, and see what it becomes in the future. So it has just started to rain, but I was hoping to get this little tree potted up into this plant pot. I wasn't going to put it into a bonsai pot or anything like that, because for the time being, I just want it to grow. We've put, made a heavy cut to this, or heavy chop, and ideally, I want these roots to grow, the tree to recover, and I just really want to allow the tree just to grow and get a bit bigger. If we can allow this to get back like this but have a bit more back budding and interest to the trunk then fantastic we have a very good tree so for this it's just simply a case of bringing my soil back over here putting quite a lot into the base of the, the pot here and then just seating maybe massaging base of the root ball just to allow those roots to find their way into the, the new soil mass there you go just give that a little bit of a massage there's no yeah there's no white tips on these roots which is good because 
Well, I'm not going to do any root pruning, um, but it's good because, you know, we haven't interfered with the root mass too much whilst the tree is still growing, you see what I mean? It is still dormant. So uh, it's a good time to do these heavy chops and I pop this on. Right, so that's the two black pines all potted up. Um, if you don't know Roger, uh, I will put a link to his channel just up here. And of course, there will be one in the description box below. Um, now, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting seeing how these trees progress into the future. And, uh, you know, if we can turn them into some really sort of credible looking majestic bonsai trees. But as I say, the weather is beginning to turn for the worst. I do wonder if black pine take from cutting. So I might take some cuttings from this piece and see if I can pot them on and propagate it and uh, end up with some more black pines in my collection. But I think for now, guys, I'm getting absolutely soaked. So uh, I'll wrap this video up. And as always, take it easy, have a great day, and I'll uh, see you on the next one.